Do you feel the militia is still suffering from the stigma of Oklahoma City? I think that a lot of the problems with the militia right now is a problem projected by the media. It's an image problem. They love to go for sensationalism. They love to tie people in. Uh, the people linked to Oklahoma City were a, a military veteran recently discharged, uh, two military veterans, and uh, whoever else was involved, because it doesn't seem likely to me that two people could have done that. I, I, you know, that was a horrible thing to see it happen. And it was even more horrible to be tied in with that. Now, if anybody in the Michigan militia had been involved with something like that, they certainly would have been arrested and, and and they haven't been. People, I guess, have a lot of misconception about the militia. The media hasn't done a very good job in painting us in a good light over the years. Macomb County Commander Mike Wilkes has a point. The media had a field day reporting a tenuous tie between the Michigan militia and Oklahoma City bombers Tim McVeigh and Terry Nichols. I know for a fact that uh, McVeigh was never in the militia. Not at all. He went to one meeting. He mentioned a few things that we found disturbing and he was asked to leave. But when McVeigh's bomb went off in Oklahoma, it was the militia that was shown the door. Are militia people prone to conspiracy theories? You know, a lot of what goes on in the country that's, that's, that's flawed or that seems to violate the Constitution is done right in the open. Uh, I wouldn't call a lot of the things that are happening conspiracies. They're done in the open and in your face. Uh, gun control laws aren't secretly passed. Taxes aren't secretly raised. Uh, the Patriot Act wasn't secretly passed. It was done publicly with a lot of hoo-ha and fanfare. And yet it seems to violate many of the principles embedded in the Constitution. So conspiracy, not necessarily. A lot of bad muckety-muck, definitely. You don't have to look for conspiracies to find problems. They're right there in front of your nose. Are militia people survivalists? Survivalists tend to move off to the woods and be alone and isolated and, and tend to, to be away from society. Most militia people that I know tend to live in urban areas and we're there to help each other and help our neighbors survive. Uh, if by survivalist you mean do we, just like every other living organism, want to continue our existence, certainly we're that. Are we, uh, are we the lone hermit in the woods? No, only a few of us are. Most of us uh, live in or near the city and we're willing to work with our neighbors. I've, I've got no want to go out and shoot anybody that's that's not me you know but i want to have the the safe power to know that i know how to take care of myself if the need are there women in the militia yes uh, several several are qualified level level one uh, they are excellent shots they are serious uh, i wouldn't cross them <laughs> under any circumstances and yes there, there are women involved there are and there need to be more. Hi, we come and shoot. Is the government going to target me if I join the militia? And, and uh, furthermore, why should I get involved? One, if you're asking if the government's going to investigate you for doing perfectly legal things, you need to stop. Look at why you're even asking that question. If you think the government targets people for things like that, you probably have America mistaken for something like Nazi Germany or or East Germany or the Soviet Union. Uh, here the government's not supposed to target you for doing legal things. So if you're asking that question, something's wrong. You should get involved because it's your right and it's your duty and because things like crime, invasion, tyranny, and terrorism happen everywhere. They happen daily. And if you participate in learning how to defend your life, your liberty, your property, and your constitution, then by being educated, active and armed, you can live in a safer, freer society. So is militia activity legal then? Absolutely. Uh, federal law requires persons participation in the, in the militia. Uh, the state law says, a state constitution says every person has a right to keep and bear arms in the defense of himself and the state. Uh, the U.S. Constitution says right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed and also, also, the right to peaceably assemble, mix those two rights together, you got instant militia. If it were not legal, I would have been arrested in 1994. It's 2002. Here I am. Hi, Mom. I'm not in jail.
Isn't the militia really the National Guard? No. The militia is all citizens capable of bearing arms. There are many citizens who are capable of bearing arms who are not in the National Guard or the Reserve. The National Guard and the Reserve are now subcomponents of the Federal Army. That's not a bad thing, that's just the way it is. The citizenry is the militia. The National Guard and the Reserve are what are called a select militia, narrow little sliver of society that's picked up by the Federal Army and slung off to places like Bosnia, Iraq, and whatever stand. And the militia consisting of just the people, the citizens, really can't be bundled up and flown overseas to some godforsaken third world hellhole to serve duty for 12 months. Because we're here, we're at home. Do you consider yourself a private army? No, we're citizens. We're a militia, we're not a private army. We obey all the laws. We elect our, our commanders, our leaders, and we're open to anybody that wants to get involved. So we're not a private army. Anybody can come and join. Come past level one, vote yourself in as commander, and have a good time of it. So there's no secret society or underground cells looking to overthrow the government? Mm, if there is, they're far more secret and underground than I'm aware of. We have people of all walks of life, all different ages and professions. I am not anti-government. We are good people and we're professional and, you know, we, we don't act out of anger. We're just here as the militia has been for hundreds of years. After the Oklahoma City bombing, many people left the organization. But since the September 11th terrorist attacks, the Michigan militia tells us there's been a resurgence. Membership is increasing. More people want to join the group. I think it's great. I think every citizen should do anti-terrorist training. And even though there's been no formal recognition from Washington, these men and women are big believers of anti-terrorist paramilitary trainings. I believe in freedom. I believe in honor. I believe in doing what I can to protect the people of this country. And I'm proud to be an American, and uh, I do what I can to serve this country.